you asked for it, we got it. IRIX 2023, one of the most interesting and largest robot exhibitions in the world, took place in Tokyo, Japan this year. The Big Sight Exhibition Center hosted more than 650 companies from all over the world. This year, the Japanese vision of a bright future in unison with robots inspired the undertone of the exhibition, namely, sustainable society created by robotics. It just so happens that in Asia, unlike Europe, robots are viewed as assistants and not competitors. So besides a plethora of robotic solutions for various industries, it wasn't a big surprise to see humanoid droids and, of course, anime robots. Let's get it. Last year, Kawasaki Heavy Industries wowed visitors with its concept of a robotic goat for transporting people and goods. We got a review of that linked in the description below. This year though, the company brought its A-game, and by that we mean a lot of robots, mostly human looking. For example, the Kaleido robot in version 8 was presented to the public for the first time. The robot has become more stable and confident when performing various jobs, including handling heavy objects. Kaleido is positioned primarily as a rescue robot, so it should be able to walk on any type of surface, climb ladders, and perform any physical work with inhuman dexterity. That said, the robot is far from compact. Its height is 5'11", which is 180 centimeters tall, and its weight is 190 pounds, which is 86 kilos. The robot body has 32 degrees of freedom, and unlike earlier versions, the robot has a face in the form of a screen to show emotion. Among the tasks the robot can now handle are cleaning up debris scattered during a natural disaster, working with people to carry large items together, and transporting humanitarian aid, including unloading trucks. Interestingly, Kawasaki has been developing Kaleido since 2015. On the other hand, this is considered to be the best time for humanoid robots in terms of maturity of all technologies. We here at Pro Robots are taking bets when Kaleido is going to hit the shelves. What's your guess? Let us know in the comments. Also on display was Kaleido's little brother, Friends Robot. It's based on Kaleido's technology, but there are a number of differences due to the fact that this robot has to work indoors, in the narrow corridors of homes, hospitals, and businesses. It has a thinner profile to make the robot slimmer. To utilize it, the company had to develop high-quality and compact motors to reduce the overall weight. This is how the robot accommodated for nodes similar to Kaleido in a metal body of 5'3", 160 centimeters tall, and weighing 120 pounds, 55 kilos. As the developers say, in the Friends robot, they have managed to achieve a balance between the quality needed for industrial use, strength, and a more subtle, even delicate design. Moreover, the robot can work safely around people and even care for them. Would you be okay with such a caretaker in a hospital? Or would you opt for a nurse? Kawasaki has a lot in the pipeline. There's the social robot Neoki and Foro for autonomous delivery. Neoki is designed to interact with people. The robot can move in a crowd and help people safely using its hands equipped with sensors. One of its tasks is to load and unload robots without arms, such as Faro. Neoki can ride elevators, open doors, and communicate with people using gestures. So far, two settings are in the works, autonomous or remote. Its bestie, Faro, can also move separately or in a group, adjust to the pace of the movement in the crowd, and, like his friend Neoki, ride elevators. At Kawasaki Heavy Industries booth, the robot that caught everyone's eye though was perhaps the quote, the walking robotic Nimbus support robot. It's basically a cushion on bending legs with wheels that can follow and repeat human movements of their body, or just the tailbone? One could assume that the robot serves as lumbar support when a person is standing or leaning backwards, but why does it lean forward? This would make sense if a person was somehow attached to the robot with straps or something, but in the demo, they didn't have that. What is this robot for? Hit us up with your suggestions in the comments. Jinki Itai, another Japanese company, has actually used the Kaleido platform from Kawasaki Heavy Industries to develop their own robot. The Type 01 Kaleido version 1.0 is a controlled system for industry with force control technology. Its purpose is to remove people from dangerous places when performing heavy physical work, primarily high-rise jobs in civil engineering and energy sectors. The company already has a giant robot for such purposes, Space Heavy Work Machine. They don't nickel and dime with these names. Already services railroad tracks, power lines, and can perform a wide range of tasks where there is no possibility to deploy a crane or where a crane is not enough. A humanoid torso mounted on a truck can handle many tasks, thanks to the precise repetition of the operator's movement with the right force who works out of a special cabin and runs the robot with the help of VR controllers and a headset.
This behemoth is installed on heavy machinery weighing 15 and a half thousand pounds or 7 tons and its size and strength are not always appropriate. So, Jinki Itai combined its remote control technology with Kaleido's humanoid platform to develop a more compact Type 01. Handling is intuitive and the force applied by the operator serves as the driving force of the robot. The weight and haptic feedback is then relayed back to the operator, making it a breeze to navigate. Here's another gem from Waseda University, one of Japan's most prestigious private schools. I give you Moonshot. It's a robot for housework equipped with generative artificial intelligence. It can memorize human movements and then repeat them. For example, by watching the owner, the robot can learn how to hang clothes on hangers. Okay, not the most useful skill, but in the future, the university plans to expand the capabilities of the robot to all chores. Incidentally, developing robots that can learn and act on their own through co-evolution of artificial intelligence and machines is one of the university's main goals. Given Japan's declining birth rate and aging population, the importance of creating robots for all aspects of society is one of the priorities of the government and the country's research centers. And where would Irix 2023 be without bats in the belfry, like the body robotic pillow called Love at a Distance? The developers from Kanazawa Institute of Technology must have hired the same marketing team from Jinki Itai. The gist of the pillow is to transfer body movements, heat, and heart rate to another. So, if you're in a cuddly mood but in a long-distance relationship, this might be right up your alley. Realman from China showcased several robots at the exhibition, demonstrating the capabilities of its mechanical arms. There was one on top of a unitary robot dog. Unlike its counterparts, this one resembles and moves like a human arm. It looks a bit strange, but the crowd loved it. Realman's mechanical arm is a whole category in and of itself. It can be attached to anything, from a mobile platform to a humanoid torso. You can get a robot with two of these bad boys from Alibaba and voila, you have an assistant. Check out Realman's channel for more info. Also at the company's booth, a humanoid robot with a chatbot function based on GPT. A robotic artist. The company's go-to mechanic arm. And a robot masseuse based on the same, you guessed it, mechanical arm. Realman's really proud of their robotic arms, claiming they're ultra lightweight, durable, strong, and accurate, and can be easily attached onto any robot. Actually, no need for a robot. Stick it on your car for a totally unique drive-through experience. What say you, yay or nay? Moving along, a Japanese robot exhibition wouldn't be Japanese without anime. This time, the incarnation was Hatsuki, a character produced through the fusion of anime, artificial intelligence, and robotics. The 4'9", or 145 centimeter tall robot, has become a temporary ambassador for Sanyo Denki, a Japanese company that specializes in electronics and its components. Hatsuki is not a comic book character, but a test bed for the Cutiroid Project, a technical study group. Thanks to this group, robotics enthusiasts have tested, for example, the generation of humanoid robot movements using deep learning, human-robot interaction, artificial intelligence research, and an operational test of a, quote, virtual YouTuber system. Hatsuki's creators aim to ultimately break the, quote, fourth wall by allowing you to interact with the character in real life. The robot is equipped with a motion capture system, and it can also be controlled via the internet or directly play movements from anime. The developers have also implemented the ability to dialogue with the robot thanks to the ubiquitous GPT. On to another Japanese company, Shibora Machine presented a prototype of a two-armed conoid robot to support manufacturing processes. This is the third generation of the robot, it should have a high degree of autonomy and technically should perform tasks without training or programming. The Konoid 3, currently in development, is suitable for tasks such as transporting and assembling parts and packaging boxes. It features two six-axis arms that can operate independently thanks to AI technologies. Each arm can move at a speed of 3 feet or 1 meter per second and lift loads of up to 13 pounds, 6 kilos. The robot accumulates and incorporates its own experience and can work side by side with humans on a moving conveyor belt. Look at this cutie patootie! Ugo presented its new robot Ugo Mini. With it, the company proposes to automate inspection tasks in commercial facilities. Simply put, there are many robot inspectors capable of reading meters and monitoring environmental changes. The little guy can be used for security, inspection, and elderly care. 
It all sounds fine and good, but in reality, the range of capabilities of such robots is still quite limited, even though it does compensate for it with a bargain price. Interestingly, earlier, the company bet on a more complex and functional system, a humanoid robot on wheels with two arms and a drone on board. The robot could move around the company's premises, open doors, check windows, and, if necessary, launch a drone to take a bird's eye look-see. Similarly to last year, Arty showed its collaborative humanoid robot Foodly with artificial intelligence. Its purpose is to work on production lines alongside humans. Foodly is able to package oddly shaped objects, whether it's metal parts, chicken legs, or noodles. By the way, the robot has already been implemented at Hirai Company and Ichibiki Company, which introduced Foodly into real production processes in March of 2022. Unitry Robotics went all out this year with its newest bipedal humanoid general purpose robot, the H1. The 511, 180cm tall robot weighs 100 pounds, 47 kilos, and can walk at speeds of more than 3 miles per hour or 5 kilometers per hour. The motors in the robot's joints have up to 360 newton meter of torque, its legs have 5 degrees of freedom, and its arms have 4. The hands on the robot's arms do not have brushes, but the developers say that they will eventually get there. The thing is that the H1 was created on the basis of the company's four-legged robots, which is why it looks a bit weird with its wide torso and thin legs. The company's know-how accelerated the development, but only the parts that were already present in robot dogs. For positioning in space, the robot is equipped with a 3D LiDAR with all-round vision and a depth camera, and all of those are mounted on a frame that mimics the head. Unitree predicts that the development of H1 may take 3 to 10 years, which is good because we can start saving up for it now since it might cost as much as 90,000 US dollars. Meanwhile, Yamaha gave everyone a glimpse into the future of handling materials in factories. In a demonstration at the show, a mechanic arm on top of a mobile robot could be seen picking up parts delivered by an unmanned electric vehicle. Given that IREX 2023 was all about solutions to offset the ever-growing labor shortage, the company's hanging 10 on this trend. Fanuc surprised everyone at the exhibition by introducing controllers for the R50IA and R50IA Mate robots that meet international cybersecurity standards for the first time. The company said it had improved both control performance and remote maintenance capabilities. The company also upgraded and showed the RoboGuide V10 system with the ability to pretest robot systems in virtual reality. There were more collaborative robots and of course the industrial giants such as the M2000, M1000 and M950. The main attraction of any Fanuc booth designed for the automotive industry. Jumping back to the Kawasaki stand, we find Hinatori, the surgical robot. Although it's manufactured by another company under its own brand, the robotic surgical system, which accurately reproduces the smallest of movements of the surgeon, is based on the technological solutions of Kawasaki Heavy Industry. This explains its presence at the company's booth. Hinatori is fully equipped with a surgeon's cabin and operating in a visualization unit. Besides anime characters, there were other cute robots at the exhibition. For example, Keeperan from Miraicon. It's a robot friend that reacts to what you show it. For example, show the robot ice cream and it will want it, but show it a broom and it will cause a ruckus. The robot's movements and facial expressions are quite smooth and realistic. And the most interesting thing is that you'll never know what the robot will do in response to your drawing or a photo. Yay or nay? Bye Bye World riled the visitors up displaying their Big Clappy and his little brother Baby Clappy robots. This fun duo is designed to elicit applause and help attract customers to your business. They can also entertain visitors at public events by singing well-known songs and clapping their hands. IAI Japan presented an attraction called Magic Field at its booth. It was a demonstration of 320 axes electric drive synchronized together in an artistic performance simulating a game of soccer with not one, but four soccer balls. And Mitsubishi Electric unveiled a concept for a fully automated lithium-ion battery assembly line at the IREX 2023.
NVIDIA's booth was popular among the professional community. The company presented several of its flagship products at once. The theme of the exposition was, quote, from virtual space to the real world with Isaac Sim. NVIDIA Isaac Sim is an application tool that simulates robots and other objects in a virtual environment created with Omniverse to generate sufficiently accurate and high-quality synthetic data for robot training. Moreover, it also allows you to simulate a photorealistic and physically accurate virtual environment to train them. This allows manufacturing companies to bring robots to market faster. In the simulator, developers can customize routes, obstacles avoidance algorithms, and multi-robot collaboration. NVIDIA also presented the Nova Carter robot based on the Isaac Nova Orin architecture. Equipped with stereo and fisheye cameras mounted on all sides, the machine is designed to accelerate the development and deployment of autonomous mobile robots in customer warehouses. Denso made an appearance showcasing not only its robots, but also a new artificial intelligence algorithm that automatically generates optimal motion paths for multiple robots to operate simultaneously at high speeds. This tech basically puts specially trained engineers for complex and time-consuming robot training out of a job. Universal Robots introduced the UR30 model at IRIX in Tokyo. It's a fairly compact, collaborative robot weighing 66 pounds or 30 kilos that can easily lift and transport loads equal to its own weight. A pretty decent achievement for such a small robot. There's more, but we're out of time. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and join our community in Telegram to stay up to date on anything and everything robots. Until next time, bye-bye.